Welcome back to Flying with Overkill F-18C Hornet Pilots. Um, today we're going to be taking a quick step away from combat and taking a look at a couple of systems that um, <clears throat> either A, are unknown, misconstrued, or just not used, I think, to their full potential. Um, and today we're just going to be going over the fuel system. And I'm going to try to do this after every, you know, X amount of combat videos. Go over something that's maybe not combat related, but that you may be finding useful and not taking full advantage of. And today that's going to be the fuel system. So we're going to take a look at the fuel page as well as the FPAS or Flight Performance Advisory System. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to go ahead and come down here. I'm sorry for the glare, guys. Um, whoever set up this mission editor... <coughs> um, decided to do it with the sun directly behind the screen. So I hope everyone can see everything. Looks like it's okay. So we're going to start on the tactical menu, then we're going to switch over to uh, the support menu. We're going to come over here to the fuel page. Let's go ahead and lock the camera up. And let's talk about fuel real quick. Um, I'm going to do this pretty fast. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on it, so here we go. So tank 1 and tank 4. These are your fuselage tanks, okay, going right down the center of the aircraft. Then you have your left and right engine feed tanks. So everything sort of feeds into these two tanks, right, because these are the two tanks that are actually feeding the engine. And then you have your left and right wing tanks. There's actually fuel in the wings, for those of you who don't know. And then you have your left and right external tanks. So if the two fuel bags on the wings there weren't there these also would not be there okay um, you have your total internal fuel which is all of this combined and then your total fuel on board which is obviously everything okay you have your bingo setting here which matches down here so my wing uh, uses 3000 as the default so we'll go ahead and set that real quick and boom all right, so you sort of get the all-in-one on the fuel page so not a whole lot to it that's all I'm gonna go over on the fuel page just thought I'd break that down for anyone who doesn't quite understand how to read it. All right, so now let's go back to our menu, go back to the support page, and let's look at the FPAS, or Flight Performance Advisory System. All right, and we're going to start out by talking about the climb setting. This is probably one of the most misconstrued that I've seen so far. I need to be very clear that the, from what I can tell, okay, and all the information that I've been able to gather on the climb, the climb... Um, advisory does not tell you or is not giving you a, a rating that is the most fuel efficient It is merely telling you what the best speed to climb at with the aircraft's current weight and altitude is okay it is something that is dynamic it is something that is going to change as we continue to go um, the only thing that I'm going to talk about real quick up here is we have our current range and endurance up top everything up here is current everything down here is optimum okay so obviously we want to get to our optimum um, performance today, okay? We're going to be flying to Waypoint 2, which I believe is about 112 miles out. And I'll be showing you guys all that and how it works here in just a minute. Um, you can see Waypoint down here. We have Waypoint 2 selected, but notice that Waypoint is not boxed. And you can see it's 114 miles out, but there's nothing here. If I box Waypoint, now we get some, uh, some good stuff. So I'm going to lock us down again we can see nav to waypoint two this also works the exact same for the tac can currently we're looking at 17 minutes three seconds flight time and based on our current fuel burn we should have 12,863 pounds to 60-ish pounds of fuel by the time we get there now obviously that's going to change as we start uh throwing some um some uh, power on the engines all these numbers here are giving you what your best performance is, whether it be range or endurance, to 2,000 pounds of fuel. So we have a total fuel right here of 15,220 pounds. This is telling us how long everything is. So right now, I'll give you guys an idea. If we want to go as far as we can go, we would go up to 34,600 feet. We would fly at Mach 0.83, and we would be able to get 1,114 nautical miles until we reach 2,000 pounds. Okay, so when we hit 1113 at this point, we'll be at 2,000 pounds down here on the fuel gauge. Okay, same thing with endurance. If we were to fly at 26,649 feet at Mach 0.62, we should get 2 hours and 22 minutes of playtime. All right, and we'll go over everything, everything else. Everything, everything else? Nice. We'll go over the air, everything else once we get airborne. So first, let's talk about the climb. So if we box climb, and then we come up here to our HUD, you can see right here we get a new indication, 465 knots. That is our optimum climb speed. Okay, and how we're going to do this, and this is based on maximum performance. So we're going to push the engines to full power, and we're going to hold our pitch scale to whatever we need to do to reach the indicated airspeed here. So we want these two numbers to match as closely as possible. They don't have to be perfect. Okay, and what we're going to do is climb to our 
optimum range altitude. Okay, so we're going to climb up to 34,645 feet. But again, as altitude changes, speed changes, and fuel load changes, i.e. our weight, uh, this number will also change slightly. So keep an eye on that as we start to climb. All right, guys. Well, I'm not going to do anything pretty or fancy. We're not going to worry about uh, any of the cool stuff today. We're just going to get rolling. So I'm going to go ahead and apply power. All right. Uh, what's going on here? Why have I lost my brakes? Parking brake isn't on. Engines are at 98% and yet we aren't moving. Are we in an active pause? That would explain that. All right. <laughs> here we go. Burners are lit. Airspeed's alive. Nose wheel steering disengaged. All right. There's rotation speed. Come on, baby. All right, wheels up, flaps up, or I should say to auto, and let's start our climb. So I'm just going to keep pitching as long as the um, indicated airspeed continues to climb. Let's go ahead and start referencing steer two. Still got good acceleration, so I'm going to keep pitching up. All right, starting to drop a little bit. So as the indicated airspeed, our indicated airspeed gain slows down, I'm going to start pitching nose down. We're still climbing. I'm going to go ahead and pitch down a little bit. And you can see here, we're looking for 35,000 now. Still at 450 knots. I'm going to pitch down a bit to achieve that airspeed. And notice that the airspeed required is changing, so now we've just about got it. So I'm going to pitch back up and just try to keep them in line now. So now it's only about 400 knots. 420, so I'm pitching up. pretty close to each other now. They're starting to come in line as we climb. Looking for 35.5 now. Getting a little slow. Thirty-five seven. Passing through thirty-one thousand five hundred. Looking for thirty-five seven. Thirty-five eight. Thirty-five nine. So that's about right there. So let's go ahead and level her out. So we got thirty-six thousand feet. Thirty-five nine. Let's go ahead, just for shits and giggles. Try to match it up a little bit. All right, that's better. That's closer. All right, so now what we're going to do is just go ahead and bring our brightness up because we can't see anything. Lock our bolt in. And we're just about right on point. Okay, so now let's go ahead and set our auto throttle here too. Let's take a look at a few things. And we'll go ahead and pause for a minute. So now let's take a look at where we're at. And let's take a look at what our current Mach is before we get going. So currently our Mach is 0.84. You can see that right here. Okay. So let's come down here and take a peek. <clears throat> so 0 0.84, 0 0.83 depends. Okay. 
So to 2,000 pounds, at our current altitude and speed, we would get 931 uh, miles, okay? Our endurance is one hour and 52 minutes of play time. Again, current speed and altitude. That's what all these numbers are going to be. Now, the best Mach to 2,000 pounds will be Mach 0.83. We'll get 937 miles, so we're basically there. And the best endurance or play time will be 0.74, and it'll give us two hours and one minute. Nav to waypoint two currently is 15 minutes, 36 seconds. We should have 11,473 pounds by the time we get there. And currently we're burning, burning 11 pounds per nautical mile. Now we get into the optimum. Okay, so these are the settings that will give us the absolute best performance. So altitude is 35,969 feet, which we're basically at. A Mach of 0.82 should get us to 936 miles to 2,000 pounds. Our endurance, again, optimum endurance will be 27,697 feet, 0.62, and two, uh, two hours and two minutes of playtime. Okay, so really, we're basically right on our optimum configuration right now. Okay, <clears throat> now we can turn our climb off. We're done climbing. Now let's talk about a few other things. Let's take a look at the TACAN and how that would look up here. So if we're getting low on fuel, we need to figure out what's going to be our best option. So first let's start with our TACAN. We're going to do set air to air, go 6-3 x-ray, hit enter, turn it on. And now if we box the TACAN, you can see TACAN 10 identified here. 15 minutes, 37 minutes or 37 seconds, and again, at about 11,400 pounds of fuel by the time we get there. Now, this is going to be changing dramatically because, remember, the tanker is also moving, so it's increasing its distance to us. Okay, so this these are going to fluctuate quite a bit as the distance to the TACAN station changes. Okay, now, if this was a ground TACAN, it probably wouldn't change quite as much, but since this is a air-to-air -air tanker, you know, this is going to bounce around a little bit. And then finally, the home fuel warning. I'm sure plenty of you guys have been flying around. You go to increase your power and you get a master caution and you get home fuel over here on the DDI. Okay, what that means is that if you continue at that power, you will not be able to make it to the current home station. Okay, is the, if I understand this correctly. If I'm misunderstanding this, by the way, guys, any of this, please feel free to throw it in the comments below. You know, we're all here to learn. But that's my understanding of it. Because the other catch-22 here is once you drop below 2,000 pounds, these numbers where it says 2, 2,000 pounds will change to 0 pounds. So once you reach 2,000 pounds on your fuel indicator, these will say to 0. So it will let you know how long you have until you're out of gas. Okay, and from what I've seen, anywhere from 100 to 200 pounds of fuel left, the, uh, the F-18 shuts down. Okay, so if we wanted to... Right now, home zero is always going to be our default starting location. So in our case, home is Katasi. Okay, this is where we took off from. But let's say we needed to divert. All right, so if I click on my plane here, I set up a divert field here at waypoint six. Now let's make sure that that's actually accurate and it's not screwing with me here. Yep, okay. So if we come over here and change home, to six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Now that home fuel warning, okay, is going to register to here, okay. So now it's talking about here. So as long as we don't get that warning, you know, if we need to divert, and uh, I have this set up as a divert field, you know, because here, here's our tankers for when my wing and I practice. We have our tankers out here. And if we need to divert, we can come down here versus trying to fly back home, okay. And then we can also get our information, flight information, you know, if we're low on gas, we can set this to waypoint six and get some more information, okay? And then obviously you would still follow your max optimum range and speed settings to get home, okay? So that's how you use it all together, especially if you're low on fuel. So that's actually a good call. So if I was low on fuel right now, I've got waypoint six plugged into the, oh, hang on, that helps. So I've got waypoint six plugged into the uh, computer now, and if I was low on gas and needed to really get back home, I know there's no way I'm going to make it to the tanker, you know, maybe it's on the other end of the map, my steps would be to plug in waypoint six in the computer, box waypoint, and then come down here and look at my optimum settings. Okay, I want optimum range. Obviously, I need to get as far as I can on the little gas that I got. So here's where we would put, we would set these parameters. We would go up to 36,240 feet, and we would go to Mach 0.82 and try to run home. Okay. 
All right, guys. Well, like I said, there isn't a whole lot uh, more to that. I hope uh, it all made sense to you. Um, play around with it. And try to uh, start using it more in your missions. And, um, you know, uh, if you guys have any questions or comments, please leave them in the field below. If I missed anything, you know, point it out. And um, if I need to clarify anything, point it out. As usual, guys, stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks.